Hi, I'm Phyllis from southernfrugal.com and we're in the bathroom or right at the doorway and we have finished. I'm very, very happy to tell you we have finished with this bathroom. We uh, replaced the floor under the commode and we also, uh, or I did, replaced everything about the commode, all the connections, everything. And we've got the floor down and of course previously I had painted the cabinets and replaced the knobs. So anyway, I want to talk to you all about what we have learned. All right, let me close this door so we don't get disturbed by the dogs. All right, I'm going to sit right here on this new commode seat. And uh, so what we discovered was um, the commode had previously apparently overflowed, shall we say, and this was before we moved in. We had had a contractor in here doing some of the work and a plumber. And so um, when I tell you the rest of it, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Um, so they had used a three-fourths inch plywood down on the floor and uh, somehow or other the commode overflowed at some point. I guess the workers were using the commode, I'm not sure. But anyway, it definitely overflowed because you could see the marks on the floor. But it really didn't leak after that. And so what ended up happening is the wood dry rotted under the commode, the plywood part. The heart pine was still there and intact, but we had uh, raised the floor by three-fourths of an inch. So anyway, we ended up uh, replacing from one joist to another and then in between the joists, perpendicular to them, uh, I went ahead and put in two by fours so they would be directly under the commode. And uh, then we replaced the plywood that we had taken up using uh, three-fourths inch treated plywood this time. And uh, so also I had to go under the house and replace the uh, cutoff valve because uh, we just were replacing that. And so I got the screw-on type and uh, I was able to replace the CPVC pipe and um, I also did the one in the front which is the spigot out front that we use to water stuff if we ever do and uh, so anyway I wanted to tell you that what we learned about all this or what I learned because Mr. Bucky was mostly taking up our garden out there it kind of burned up in this last little heat wave we had but he did uh, end up using a circular saw to cut out the wood. The reciprocal saw did not work in this application, So, but Mr. Bucky said we're going to keep that saw because he loves a reciprocal saw and we'll be using it up Mountain Rest, so we kept that. But he came in and cut out the wood because I don't know how to use one of those great big saws. I'm kind of afraid of them to tell you the truth, but uh, he came in and cut out the floor as much as we needed to cut out. Um, we took out two pieces of the heart pine so that we could get the, uh, the joists in and I was able to get those two in. Now I'll have to tell you, I cut them both. I measured, now Mr. Bucky was supervising of course, and um, so I, I measured and cut them both the same time. And they were different measurements but I still cut them the same time. And I brought them in, I put one in, and it fit perfect, of course, just perfect. And I toenailed it all, I mean, I, t I screwed it in, sort of like a toenail, like if you would toenail a nail in, I did the screws at the angle. Got the first one in just perfect. I was so proud of myself. And then I went to put the second one in, and I measured very carefully, y'all, very carefully. And I could not understand it was too loose. So I had to get Mr. Bucky in here, and I said, I measured it perfect. I know I did. What's wrong? And he said, wood travels. I said, what do you mean, wood travels? And he said, well, you put the first one in, and it kind of separates the uh, joists a little bit. Even though this house is very old and they've been there for years, when you wedge the first one in, it separated the wood. So you'll have to measure it again now and recut that wood, so I did. So I, I wasted a 24 inch piece of, of 2x4, but anyway, uh, we got the second one in. And then uh, cut out the plywood, and I did end up cutting, the, cutting out that plywood. Actually, 
uh, using a jigsaw. I've got a pretty big jigsaw, which I'm not afraid to use, and I cut it out. It worked perfect. We did not replace the flange because it was a real beefed up flange and it worked really well. Still intact, no problem with it, so we kept the flange and just took the new one we had bought back. And it all worked out on the floor and it was level, I, which I could not believe. I mean, I was just shocked, okay? But uh, as it turned out, from the beginning, this commode had actually been kind of leaning up against the wall. It was actually tilted a little bit, which we didn't know. And because um, the, the contractor had, they had installed it. And uh, so all these years, no problem, uh, but the wood under it had dry rotted. There were, was no joist under it. And so therefore it just tilted back a little bit. So anyway, it now it does not tilt now, y'all. It's all in there perfect now. And uh, so I wanted to show y'all a little bit about what I used and talk to you also about what I learned. Now, again, we had a contractor that uh, actually installed a full bathroom upstairs, redid the second bathroom upstairs, and also redid this one. And we actually were working on the house and also had contractors in here for about 18 months before we moved in. So most of the time we weren't really here when they were working because they didn't want us here. And then when they weren't here, we were working on things like refinishing floors and stuff like that. So uh, what they ended up doing, which is really a no-no, and I don't know that they knew that way back then, but they had used plumber's putty on all the sink connections, the bathtub, the shop, everything. And so after we had been here a couple of years, everything started leaking, not much, but a little bit. And so I ended up going back over everything upstairs and really the only thing down here was this sink. I didn't do the commode, I didn't do the shower and uh, replaced the plumber's putty with silicone tape for the connections because that's what you're supposed to use because on the plumber's putty it plainly tells you, you don't, you're not to use this on plastic and PVC and CPVC are indeed plastic so it just doesn't work. So what I did was use this and I used silicone grease on the grooves of anything that was being screwed together to prevent leaks and this makes it go on a lot easier. Now I'll have to tell you I learned all this from watching videos, YouTube videos for hours and hours because some of them were telling, telling us wrong, some of them were telling us right and we had to figure out which was which. So these are the two things you use. This is simply used just to make things you screw it together go together easier because you've got on the Teflon tape. So, after everything said and done, we learned a lot, especially me. And uh, everything has turned out fine. We have no leaks anywhere, and I'm so thankful for that. But anyway, I replaced the toilet inside guts. Now, this part of the toilet I had replaced before. But this time I went ahead and replaced that little, uh, it, it's a gasket on, between the, the uh, commode tank and the bowl. So usually they're black, the ones we got, the one we got this time was red. It's just a big gasket thing that, that sits in there. It's real easy to put those in. And then this part is the kind of inside guts that you don't have that float with because the, the one we had before had a was a float in there. It never ran or anything, but anyway, this is just a lot. There's a better picture of what it looks like right there. These work real well. We have, have them in, uh, I installed them in both sinks, I mean both commodes upstairs. So anyway, and I had mentioned before when we were doing the commode, I just wanted to tell you this, that we were going to replace the flange and we had already bought a new flange to use but actually, actually, after we got all this apart and got the old one cleaned up, we saw the old one was 
really nicer than the new one we were going to install, so we decided to keep it because it was in great shape. It was really no problem at all there. So anyway, I wanted to show y'all uh, what the connections look like. Don't use plumber's putty to do with PVC pipe or CPVC pipe or any of those connections. You're better off using the Teflon tape and this. And I'll tell you that, that a lot of directions say to just wrap the tape around a couple of times. But I watched a video of a guy who really seemed to know what he was talking about and he said wrap it six to eight times and put this on the threads and you'll never have a leak and I think he's exactly right. Yeah, exactly. All right, so I'm gonna show y'all what we've done down here. Well, first of all, let me explain this. Uh, this is a pressure gasket here and th these are connections that you would use for a sink, uh, like the hot or cold water on a sink and they're used on commode connections. Now, this one's been out in the garage for about 20 years, y'all. So this little gasket thing right here is really hard, so you wouldn't be able to use it. It's like, listen, it's, hear how hard it is? And they're supposed to be pliable, so, but th this will give you an idea of what it looks like. This one is one for a sink. See how long it is now? Well, let me tear this little tape off here. If I can get it off, it's been on here for so long. I don't think it's going to come off. Well, yeah, maybe it will. Anyway, this little gasket thing just, I can't get that off. That little thing slides all the way down and then the, there is a washer that goes on it and you slide that down and then screw it on and, and it compresses this little washer thing and that way you don't have any leaks. But I also still use the um, Teflon on all those connections also. All right, I'm going to show you all what we did. Hold on. Let me get up here and move the camera. All right. So first, let's, let's look inside the commode first. Yeah, let's do that first. All right, we'll take that off. All right. So there's that little connection, uh, the fill valve thing. It's real, real easy to install. And you do, this goes into the overflow pipe and that goes down and fills the commode up, you know, to a certain level. And anyway, down there, you see the two right there and right there, the two bolts, and there are uh, washers under that, and you just screw them down, and I put silicone caulk on them before I put them in, and then that's what attaches the back of the tank to the bowl of the tank. All right, let me put this back on now. Hold on. All right, so we also got the commode seat, which I super, super like, and I ordered that from Amazon. Uh, I don't have my flashlight in here, but maybe y'all can see this anyway. All right, this is the P, P, no, C, all right, let me get it right, C PVC connector, and it goes under the house, and, and it's attaching to a pipe, and then this is the cutoff valve, and so you can see, I think you can see, we've got the Teflon tape in there, and this just screws onto this part, and then this connects, this is the supply line to the commode tank, and more Teflon in there, and then that washer I was showing you is right under this bolt and you just screw it down. You have to hand tighten it. Now, if you tighten it any tighter, like with a pair of pliers or something, you, you might mess it up. So it plainly tells you to just hand tighten. Now, there's the connection under here. You've got two different uh, things that screw in here. And then this one is what holds that up, that end of it. Well, let me show you. See that end right there? No, it's turned up the other way. This is the way it goes up under there like that. And then this little piece screws down and tightens it up, that little white piece there, and tightens it up. 
All right, so under the commode, or under the uh, tank, uh, this is where those washers come through and the bolts. So if you have a leak coming out here, see in between the bowl and the tank, the chances are you need to replace those uh, washers in there. So you've got those on both sides over here too. See? And that just goes right through the commode and those washers are what prevent it from leaking. All right, so I do love my commode seat, y'all. We will definitely be getting one like this in our tiny house. I, I'm not, it won't be, be the gold color, but we had to get the gold because that's what color the commode was. Anyway, there are the cabinets. I think I showed you those before. And the floor, and I did put down the uh, quarter round or shoe molding and I did get the kind that is the hard styrofoam that way you never have to worry about anything rotting I put it down in front of the shower also and behind this is all kinds of caulks so we know that no water dripping or coming down from the showers you're getting in and out is going to get behind that and rot out any kind of wood anyway so there's the floor we put that uh, shoe mold in all around, or rather I did. All right, so that's it, y'all. Here's the commode where we placed it. And the joist is about right here. So it actually is kind of in front of the commode. And before the commode, the very tip of it might have been sitting on it a little bit, although I doubt that. But these blocks of, of uh, the... Um, tile are 12 inches so you can see it's exactly 24 inches so the joists we put in are about right here and about right here just at the edge of the flange and again we did not replace that flange because actually the older one was a lot beefier and nicer looking than the uh, new one we were going to put in so we ended up taking that one back alright y'all so that's about it uh, it's like a new bathroom in here now and it's super clean because I had to clean all the the, the walls had sawdust all over them y'all even the light fixtures had sawdust on them so luckily when uh, Mr. Bucky was using that circular saw uh, we had the door closed otherwise it would have been in the office and probably even in the den it was just like foggy in here with with uh, sawdust and so anyway we're all back to normal now in here and uh, again, if the new owners don't like the flowers, they can paint over them pretty easily, but they won't have to do any repairs, y'all, because they're all done. And let me show you, the commode does sit away. Let me get up off this floor. Look at this. It sits away from the wall that's probably about an inch and a fourth and before it was leaning against the wall because the commode I think was sitting at an angle down like that I know it was unbelievable but anyway now it's right the floor is good let me get this pipe up here yeah the floor is all good and I want to show you another little trick and I kind of thought of this on my own from past experience is placing piece of paper towel under any pipe that you have replaced anything on or tightened or that you had a leak previously just like that and leave it for I don't know a couple of days I usually leave it and to double check it come in here and if there's any kind of leak at all it's going to show up on the paper towel I've even used newspaper to do that before it definitely works okay so that's it. Sorry we didn't record all this as we were doing it, but I didn't want all that uh, dust and everything to do with my camera. I was really afraid to, to videotape while all that was going on. All right, we're going to go out front and I'm going to show you the faucet out there. Be back. All right, this is the faucet outside that was replaced and we cut the pipe off, or rather I did. I cut the pipe off about right there because up in here, is where it was cracked, where it froze. Put the uh, PVC connection 
and then just extended it up and I went ahead and got the uh, uh, faucet here from Lowe's. I had to put a little piece of wood over here so there'd be enough room to turn it off and on and I've already been using it and we have no leaks. Now this is a cutoff and this is there in order. I can't see my screen. Is that in view? Yeah. Alright, so you, what you do in the winter time is cut it off here which I've got it off right now and then you leave this part of the faucet open so the water in there will evaporate and that way you don't have anything freezing. All right, y'all, that's about it. So let me turn this camera around. All right, y'all. So uh, we will see y'all next time. Uh, we have had uh, another uh, heat wave here. And, and I know if you're in the South, you already know that. And so Mr. Bucky has taken up the whole garden because everything just cooked out in that garden. But anyway, we will see y'all next time. Bye for now.